Hi and welcome back. So in this video we're going to go through the basics of row reducing matrices. That's row reducing a matrix. In this video I'm just going to talk about the process and what we do and why, and I'll leave the examples for a separate video. Thus far we've been solving systems of linear equations by hand using the equations themselves. So we've either been doing substitution or we've been doing some version of addition or subtraction of the equations. But we have an equivalent process for solving linear systems when we view them as a matrix. This process and the way that we do this with matrices is called row reduction or Gaussian elimination. I like to just call it row reduction so that's what you'll hear in my videos. So row reduction works similarly to the addition or subtraction method and we have some specific operations that are allowed in row reduction. These are things that don't change the solutions to the matrix, they don't change the solutions that come with the linear system, they just manipulate the matrix to make it easier for us to work with. So the first of these operations is switching rows. So we can take one row of the matrix and switch it with another. This is equivalent to just switching the order of the equations. It makes sense that we could do this in a system, you can write the equations in whatever order you want, it doesn't matter which one's first in the list or next in the list, etc. Then the next operation that we're allowed to do is to multiply a row by a constant. We're allowed to do this because we are allowed to multiply both sides of the equation by the same value. So as long as we do something to both sides of the equation, this is valid, and so we can just multiply the whole row by a constant and this is equivalent. Then the last step we can do is to add or subtract one row from another. So this would be like adding or subtracting equations. So the reason why you can do this might be a little more complicated. It's basically that since we have equations, we know that one side of the equal sign is equal to the other side. And so we're allowed to do something as long as we add the same thing to both sides or subtract the same thing for to both sides. And by adding or subtracting equations, that's essentially what we're doing. I don't want to spend too much time going into that. If you want to know more about that, leave me a comment or if you're in my class, send me a message. So okay, we can switch rows, we can multiply a row by a constant, or we can add or subtract one row from another. So we only allow these operations in order to preserve the solutions. So remember our whole goal here is to try to solve a system of linear equations, we're trying to come up with a solution, and so we want to maintain that solution regardless of what we do to the matrix. We're also using the matrix to make this process easier for us, so we don't want to lose the solutions in this process. So all of these operations keep the same solution, and we have some language around this. So specifically, we say that two linear systems, or augmented matrices, remember we're writing a linear system as an augmented matrix, they are equivalent if they have the same solutions. So they might not look exactly the same, but they provide the same solution set, and so we call them equivalent. And in row reduction, we're maintaining the solutions, and instead of using equal signs, we're going to use this little tilde, it's this squiggly symbol, to denote equivalent matrices. This is just to acknowledge that we are manipulating what the matrix looks like, but we're maintaining the solutions. So we have equivalent matrices because we are getting the same solutions, but instead of writing equals, we'll use this tilde sign. So okay, we have our three operations we're allowed to do with row reduction. And our goal with the row reduction, and what the purpose of row reduction is, is to obtain something called row echelon form, or reduced row echelon form. So we're reducing the rows from something complicated to something more simple, and this simpler version of what we're obtaining is called row echelon form, or reduced row echelon form. These have abbreviations, we do REF, like REF for reduced echelon form, or REF, R, R, E, F for a reduced row echelon form. And I mention these because we often use computers or coding to find these forms. And so it's good to know the shorthand for it because most coding languages will use this shorthand. Let me show you what these look like and I think it'll start to make more sense. So in two dimensions, row echelon form is going to have the first row be a one in the first place and then some numbers. And then the second row will have a zero and then a one. And a number. So I have it here, I think it's easier to see. Those squares could be any value. But the important thing is the 1 and the 0 1. 
In reduced row echelon form, we go one step further. And so we get rid of that box that's in the left-hand side of the matrix. And so we have one zero something and zero one something. The three-dimensional version looks similar. So in just row echelon form, we have ones on the diagonal and zeros on the bottom, and then we can have whatever we want in those boxes. In reduced row echelon form, we have ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So it looks like one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So the purpose of this is that it gives us the solutions. So we specifically like reduced row echelon form because it has the answers clearly laid out. So you can notice if you look at reduced row echelon form that this gives us the X and the Y. The first column refers to the X values. So we have one X equals square, whatever that number is. And then we have one Y in the second row equals square. Basically reduced row echelon form just lets us read off the answers. So that first box is our X and the second box is the Y. This works similarly with three dimensions. So we have one X equals our first box, one Y equals our second box, and one Z equals our third box. We prefer reduced row echelon form because it has the solutions that we can read right off. But row echelon form is nice too if you happen to get there because all that it requires is back substitution. You can see on the last row, we're given one of the solutions. So in the two dimensional case, it's Y equals something or in the three dimensional Z equals something. And then you have one solution that you can back substitute to the rest of the equations. However, we much prefer reduced row echelon form, especially if we're using a computer to find it because it just gives us the solution set. And I think this will become a lot more obvious once we start to work with some row reduction and really get into the examples and you can see the solutions pop out at the end once we've done the work. So this is an introduction into row reduction. We have our three operations we're allowed and these here are the row echelon form and the reduced row echelon form that we try to get to. In the next video, we'll work through some examples, but for now, thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.